Good afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for attending. As we all know, we're on the verge of the largest transformation in the telecommunications infrastructure that we've seen in our lifetimes. That will move into the cloud, but it will move into a very different way. Flex is very proud to have sponsored two uh, thought leaders in the industry to speak on that topic today. Dharmesh Jani, who's vice president and runs Cloud Labs at Flex, as well as Saeed Barahil, who's vice president of CIMS and cloud infrastructure for Nokia. With that, I'll turn it over to Dharmesh. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. So, Telco Cloud is poised for a double digit growth over the next many years. And this transformation is going to take operators on a growth path which they are so badly seeking. OCP driven Telco Cloud is going to play a very big role in this. And we at Flex are very excited to participate in this through our own OCP initiatives. So what exactly do we mean by OCP Cloud? Service providers serve the customers at the edge of their telco clouds, which consists of residence, mobile, and enterprise. And all of that is done through their traditional physical infrastructure, which spans access, core, and backhaul. And at the back end, they serve compute services through data center. The key aspect of this telco cloud is that it delivers synchronized service delivery of network and computing over wide area network, which spans all the way from access to backhaul to core. In fact, it is this access to this physical network which makes operators in a unique position because they can provide finally fungible resources to their end telco consumers with low latency, high availability, and with high throughput for the last mile. And this is what they can use to build new services and bring themselves back on the growth path. Over the next many years, we would see distinct markets evolving. We have seen cloud computing, which has matured through public cloud. It started in early 2000, and then the scale-out technology was perfected. And today, public clouds are well-established, and there are large operators in the market with proven technologies. It took a while for these scale-out architecture principles to get absorbed into the enterprise cloud, but today they are in full swing of adapting these cloud technologies and using scale-out uh, architecture rather than scale-up architecture. Because of the proven economics in these two markets, we expect that the acceleration of this in telco would happen even faster because you can see that these technologies work and they can be monetized. We are in the middle of that transformation with SDN and NFP, where operators are leveraging these technologies to deliver synchronized services which orchestrate networking and computing resources and deliver them where they are needed. Over longer term, we expect these to merge perhaps and maybe telco functions and IT functions could be running on a common infrastructure. However, in the meantime, there are some unique and distinct aspects of telco cloud versus data center cloud. So let's look at these uh, uh, on various parameters. As I mentioned, telco clouds are physically distributed over access, core, and backhaul. They are not point locations like data center cloud. For instance, you can have a data center cloud in Oregon, or Idaho, or Texas, as is the case with Facebook. However, when you look at the telco cloud, it tends to be geographically dispersed. Because of this reason, operators also have a unique situation where they, when they look at deploying cloud technologies, they have to look at their existing infrastructure. Most of the cloud deployments are brownfield deployments for telco cloud versus greenfield deployments where a data center can be brought up from ground up. And this has implication on operations because if you are looking at data center and building it from ground up, you can decide on how to design your hardware. However, if your locations are predetermined and existing for the last 30, 40, 50 years, then you have to decide 
how to build hardware which fits in those existing locations. And you'll hear more in the second half of this talk from Nokia on how these have implications on the hardware design. In fact, we heard this morning in the keynote in Microsoft where they talked about how for Project Olympus, you have to design different power supply for different geographies. That's the problem which you have to address in Telco Cloud. And last but not least, there are unique use cases, which is what makes Telco Cloud very interesting. And again, you will hear a lot, lot more detail about these use cases. But just to touch upon this, Telco Clouds have ability to provide content where it's needed with low latency. Perhaps you are running a VR gaming and you want to deliver fast experience. Perhaps there is an autonomous vehicle and it needs a low latency decision. All of this has to be delivered from the edge, and Telco Cloud is perfectly suited to do that. On the other hand, data center clouds are all IT-centric workloads which are centralized. You're running a search operation, you're running an indexing operation, it can be done in a centralized fashion. Open source community is going to play a very big role in making this great, uh, Telco Cloud happen. We are already looking at several of these components as we are building our solutions. OCP Telco, which was mentioned in keynote this morning, is one of those projects which will make sure that the hardware is robust, hardened, and ready for the telco space. Beyond that, you have software stacks like OPNFE, which provides ability to run the entire NFE framework and provide NFE infrastructure for VNFs to run on top of that. The Denub release of OPNFE, which is happening in the second half of this year, is going to provide even more capability of orchestration. And interestingly enough, just two weeks back, AT&T has open sourced their entire e-com framework, which has now become a new Linux foundation project, one of the biggest projects called ONAP, Orchestration Open Networking Automation Project. These projects, just like how we heard this morning uh, on the keynote from Yahoo Japan, they were building Hadoop devices on an open infrastructure. Similarly, you'll be looking at solutions emerging on open hardware with combination of open software. So what are we doing in this space? Because we have these several building blocks, we have to look at ways to test them very quickly to certify them and to have ability to tweak hardware where it's necessary. So we start with our OCP hardware, and then we run various cloud stacks on top, which are automatic deploy. And then we have developed our own in-house test framework, which is automation framework driven by Ansible at the core, where we have ability to bring various playbooks, deploy them on the hardware, deploy the entire software stack on top of that hardware, characterize it, log the results, do the visualization, so that you can understand the performance. We give this ability to our partners and customers so they can take this framework, and then using SDN stack, they can run NFV, uh, VNFs on top of that, where you can perhaps look at latency performance or packet-to-packet -packet jitter. These efforts are essential for making sure that we can work together to deploy because solutions are coming from many different angles. So there are three aspects where partners have to work in cadence to deliver telco solutions. You have to engage and build software and hardware solutions together, characterize them. Once you have defined your solution, then you have to build these solutions at scale globally. It's not a matter of building one rack here or one rack there. And then beyond that, you really have to think about deployment. Again, we heard this morning in several keynotes where they were talking about issues which you have to deal with when you're going to various geographies. At Flex, we have a deep and rich knowledge developed over the last 20 years in building telecom gear for some of the biggest vendors. And we understand issues of these deployments in unique geographies like Brazil, India, or wherever. And also, we understand the unique challenges of building these boxes. 
So we want to bring this knowledge to table. We want to work with open source community as well as vendors which are innovating. And we want to participate in this journey because deploying a telco cloud is a journey which is best taken as a community. Our view is shared by one of the leaders in this telco space, Nokia. And I would like to invite Saeed now to talk about his views on open hardware, open software, and open future for Telco Cloud. Saeed. Thank you. Thank you very much for this warm introduction. I just came back from Barcelona where we had this Mobile World Congress, and I came straight, so you have to excuse the jet lag. But my presence here is a testimony of the importance that Nokia gives to this forum and to this industry. And also my boss's view on this one since he sent me directly. <laughs> but, but I share his views. Okay. And um, the good question is, why is Nokia so strong, so interested, investing so much in OCP? And I hope that I'll be able to answer this question to you at the end. You'll have the answer by the end of my presentation. So if I get, get started on uh, the OCP, I would like to explain to you a bit what is Telco Cloud today. Telco Cloud today, what we do today, what we offer to our customers is 100 milliseconds of latency. We offer them 10 megabits per second of bandwidth. We offer them, we used to offer them devices that cost up to $1,000. We offer them these devices that had one battery life today of one day. And there are no more, what are they, 10 billion devices. So this is what the telecom world is today. Tomorrow, through the stretch that you see by the IoT and the 5G, we will have to go from 100 milliseconds to 1 millisecond from 10 megabits per second to one gigabit per second, maybe 10 gigabit per second, to devices that are costing $1,000 to devices that are costing $1 in the IoT world. From 1,000 or from 10 billion device to a trillion device. So we see a drastic, dramatic, and this is what we were talking about, this transformation that we're in. And this changes the whole fabric of the telecom and uh, telecom network. This whole thing has to change. We call it even a revolution, a fourth or a fifth revolution, if you'd like. I'm not going to get into a history lesson. That's where the jet lag kicks in. But if you think about it, right now, with the autom automation and the digitization, for the first time, we are actually not transfer, transferring or moving merchandise or moving capital. We are moving knowledge. And we are moving knowledge and creating time through automation and through digitization. And that's this, this is the role and this is the impetus of the Telco Cloud and the future network of tomorrow that we need to build. Now, this, this network that has to be built has two requirements. It has to be profitable and efficient, and it also has to make business sense, business sense. And the key for us is even though we go in higher in technologies, we have to go lower in difficulty and we have to go higher in simplification. So just, I don't know if you're very familiar with the telecom world, but let's just have a look at a simple telecom network today. So, as you can see, we have run out of three letters acronyms. <laughs> so there is, needs to be a change, either of the alphabet or the network, but we can't continue. So some of my even four <laughs> letters. I don't think, I have some of my colleagues here, I do not, I think we really, most of us don't even remember what those acronyms stand for since we've been calling them acronyms for such a long time. Clearly, this were done coming from the 90s and when uh, in the 2000s for the past 20 years, we have had software linked, tied up to the hardware. It was the same box, same platform. 
And right now, if you wanted to do and achieve what I had explained to you, then you'd have to add a lot more boxes and a lot more acronyms to do that. That's not possible. So you know, on bare metal network, it would be huge effort, I would say an impossible effort, to manage a network that would have to deliver the demands that I have just explained in the previous slide. So this is not a possibility. We need to simplify. So the move towards the cloud, the telco cloud, is not an option for the operators. It is a necessity. As my, uh, my friend here presented, DJ, before, there will be convergence, for sure. There will be convergence, but the convergence is not the number one driver. The number one driver is the simplicity of this network in order to deliver on the promises of the future network. Let's see how Nokia views the new network. So if you look at the new and uh, network in here, it has divided into eight different categories, which I will not go through and uh, try to keep the scope to the OCP and to the hardware that is interesting to us. So the number one is, of course, the access, the massive scale access, which is basically the 5G uh, radio uh, part, which we will not discuss. The second part is where we want to spend some time. This is the converged edge cloud. And this is what was, we brushed a bit uh, before, and we will go a lot deeper on, on this one. Why do we need to have an edge cloud? We already have the centralized cloud all over, especially in Finland, where you can have very low cost in terms of air condition, because when it gets hot, you just have to open the window. But, but why, do you, why would you need to have this edge cloud and this mobile edge computing? And this is where I would like to go a bit deeper. So if anything to get from this presentation is the need of latency. And why do we need this latency? So like I said, so far, we were lucky. We only needed 100 milliseconds of latency. And with 100 milliseconds and the speed of light, you can have your data center up to 10,000 kilometers, which is the distance to Lapland, at least in terms of temperature. So, <laughs> so you, can, you can have a very, very centralized this is the brown building, that, uh, the brown field that we were discussing. It's data centers where you, everything is centralized there, and they can be very far at 100 milliseconds. It's not noticeable. You don't see degradation. You can offer the services that you have today. But that's only the bottom half. That's only the bottom half, the centralized. So this is where we have the centralized data center. Let's go a little bit higher up on the latency needs. Now, there are two things I want to discuss about. The first is the virtual RAM. If now you're going to have an edge cloud, and you're going to have to cloudify your RAM, and we have seen that ugly spaghetti picture with all those letters that you do need to cloudify it, then you can't afford to have, the, your, the, excuse me, the latency between your mobile to the network and back has to be four milliseconds. That means that your data center has to be 20 kilometers away, from 10,000 to 20 kilometers. That means all of a sudden, we have to reuse those brown fields and turn them into data centers, edge data centers, mobile edge computing, that are going to be able to allow us to have the virtual RAM in there. And also, the one that we talked about, the virtual reality and the augmented reality. I'll discuss a bit more about that later on. But here, the key message from this slide is that the latency matters and the latency changes the network. Now, there is one that I'm going to pretend I can understand, which is the vestibular ocular reflex. I don't know if some of you know that. It's actually, it's a, I just learned what it was. It's a medical term or a reflex where basically, if I'm staring at you, let's do it together, you and I, and I move my head, I, my eyes still look at you. Amazing, huh? That's the VOR. It's a huge name for something that easy, but that's medical science. So, but with that, without that one, you can't do virtual reality. You cannot do augmented reality, because then you just have a headache. 
it, it, it will be too blurry. So you need to have a latency below seven milliseconds in order to do that. So let's look, this, now we, we saw the need for the latency, but is this a business? Because this is what we're here for. Where, how, I remember my first slide, do we have business case? This slide should answer that. Now, we have two dimensions. We look at the bandwidth, and we look at the latency. The first bandwidth, the first, sorry, the first quadrant is what we call things. This is actually connecting people, if this sounds familiar for some of you. Our old slogan. This is people talking to people. This is where we used to be. Well, we're back in it, but the reality is this is the only quadrant that our industry in telecom has played with. The other quadrant have our uncharted territories. They're all value quadrant that we haven't been able to attain or to reach because the network was not allowing us to do so. The future network with the low latency allows you to move up or low latency to move to what DJ was describing, the, uh, the electric uh, mission critical, like the cloud assisted driving and the remote control vehicle with the full system control. And we know how important it is. In that one, you can't have 100 milliseconds of latency. We need to talk about one millisecond, microseconds, when cars are being controlled by the, net, by the cloud. I mean, otherwise there's gonna be a lot of oops so this is not an oops that you want to deal with. So that we need to have every 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers, an edge, a cloud uh, data center, OCP based, we'll discuss a bit later on, that will allow you to get into that. And that's very really highly monetized. Going up between uh, the, the video, the 360 video, Obviously, starting right now, we start to see that because we are getting this bandwidth. But below one gigabit per second, this is not really happening. In 5G, right now, we have in Mobile World Congress, Nokia demonstrated three, four gigabits per second. We, can, we already have that. But there are no terminals. If you allow me, again, it's the jet lag, a little bit of an anecdote. I have been in the telecom world for a long time. And when we started GSM, the, always the network comes in before the terminals. Do you know what GSM stands for? God send mobiles. So, 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 and, and now in 5G we are in the same, in, in, in the same, uh, let's say, format because the terminals are not there yet for the, in the 5G terminals, but the network is getting, it's pre-5G, we call it 4.5, 4.9G, but we're getting to that type of throughput in terms of bandwidth, which would allow us to have this type of video. Now, virtual reality. Virtual reality, I will get back to it, and augmented reality at the end of it, but I want to talk about this a bit, because it's gaming. And a lot of us, especially those of a certain age, okay, it's Silicon Valley, you have a lot younger, but. Mobile World Congress. I was the youngest guy there. So, <laughs> so okay, I was the cool one, yeah. Okay, so uh, well, I, I was the only one without a floppy. Okay, so it, 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 over there, so they, they, when they look at virtual reality and augmented reality, it's seen as a gimmick. This is, doesn't, you're not gonna build a network for kids to have a helmet on and starting to shoot people. That's not, that's not true. But there is an event in Finland, which I, I, I really urge you, maybe some of you, who has heard of slush in Finland? Okay, for okay, the Finns. But okay, it, it's, it's actually in November, which is the absolute worst time to visit Finland, and the most creative time you could do, you will never leave your hotel. So, and it's in this event, it's an incredibly good event with a lot of startup. A lot of people come from here. There's a direct flight only for that event. I met a company that is working on augmented reality that actually makes augmented reality office space. And they have been able to reduce office spaces by to 
So people actually being just at home, having putting on helmet, and they are just like in a meeting room. Just imagine the business cases built upon that and what comes up with augmented reality. So please, when we talk about augmented reality, don't think about that slightly overweight kid that should be working out, that is running around shooting tanks, but actually there is a huge business case that's behind it and built upon it. That's the image I want to leave you with on that part, because I'm a firm believer that there is a huge industry that's being built upon that. So now how does Nokia answer this monetization, this network? So we would do it, and we're doing it with OCP on the hardware level. So first, for the core, the centralized data centers, where we need density, hundreds of racks, OCP is perfect for this. And this is why we have invested so heavily, and we are, we are proponing, we're such a strong proponent of the OCP in this area, to provide a telco optimized, fully IT capable, where we can run both the, like it was seen in the previous slide, both the IT, both the telco cloud into one, one, uh, one cloud, one data center. Now, the more you move to the edge, you would need less because it's all about the, the latency, the virtual RAN. And that you would have edge data center in your brownfield every 20, 30, 40 kilometers in metropolitan area, a lot less in rural areas. But you already have the, the, the real state for the teleco telecom operator. They would just need to add few racks, dozens of racks, tens of racks, and they are capable to have an edge data center. Finally, when it comes to the mobile edge computing, just a single rack, single racks on this one will allow applications to be downloaded just at next very close to the, uh, to the user, allowing this four, three, one millisecond latency that is required in order to perform these new services that we discussed. Now, this slide is a bit useless for you because this is a slide that I show to people who are non-believers, the heretics who don't believe in OCP. So in here, Obviously, you know all of this. I am preaching to the choir. So you know that the OCP provides you hierarchy efficiency. You know that it approves you floor space. We know that it helps so much in the OPEX. Actually, a lot of, another anecdote, because the telecom world is so different from your area. So I ask my customers, I say, if you have an ATCA blade, and this ATCA blade goes bad, how long before you send somebody? They tell me oh, usually, first I call you, <laughs> and then I send someone immediately. Now, of course, when you, in your world, in the world of Facebook, of Amazon, you could have two, 3% of the servers down and you can fix it once a month. And that is a mindset for the telecom operator that has to change quite a lot. And then they realize, they understand the value proposition of the cloud itself and the OCP cloud uh, more particularly. So in terms of performance with Nokia, we are very proud to use and have our own OCP solution. And we can see that we are able to match and live in the same area with the other OCP players through the PUE. This is something that we're extremely proud of and allows us to do these OPEX things. I chose, there was always this picture, this is a very famous picture, of a Facebook lady showing how easy it is to change a rack, and we all know that. But of course, we want to give credit, and I would like to acknowledge Facebook for the effort and the leadership that they have shown in this area, uh, but they should forget they're not the only ones selling it. Uh, it, is, it is open compute, huh? It's, uh, <laughs> I'm glad my boss didn't show up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that is the thing. So that good segue for me to go into what is this open compute for us. So let's we talked about the open hardware, and eh? that's the OCP and the open hardware that we all have been able to use and contribute to and make it what it is today in my view, the most advanced pl hardware platform in the market and the most suitable for the telco in my mind. 
Now, if you look at that in the open NFV, in this, which is the open software, Nokia is a very strong believer about this. And this, I will stop a bit of a minute because for us telecom operators from the old days, this is a very, very new thing. First of all, everybody pretends to like open source in telecom. Okay, it's like dieting. Yeah, we should do it, no problem. But the truth is, it requires a total mindset. And when DJ was talking about testing, deploying, when we call about DevOps, we like to say that it's 70% culture and only 30% tools. That's a very good point here. We are strong believers and we strictly believe in this open so software and, this o and, and the openness because we know that we cannot dictate anymore to our customer what they need to choose, what platform they need, what VNF they need, what orchestration they need. So we cannot do that, any, uh, we cannot do that anymore. And in order for us to succeed, we need to embrace, understand, and, the, and contribute into the open uh, so solution and open uh, so software. I will go very quickly, I think, uh, maybe I probably run out of time, didn't I? Yeah, well, it was expected. Okay, so, uh, okay. so very quickly, we have uh, our differentiation in our data centers. We have hardware accelerations that I'd like to show you. You can come to our booth, see that we, we do with five times to improve the performance of, um, by five times. The second is that we do uh, an enhancement for telco grade, the OCP rack. So we do the AMI, all this is a telco specific, make it telco hardening. Uh, one of the things that I would like to <laughs> discuss is the extended lifetime. In your industry, lifetime is three years. When you talk to telecom operators, lifetime is 200. Uh, it's very hard for me to explain to them that the person who designed the hardware that they're using has already retired and fishing in Finland, and they cannot get any support, but we still usually use about 10 years. So it means for us, we need to harden it in order to deliver a much longer uh, lifetime. Then we will have, of course, a very advanced uh, virtual reality, augmented reality way of doing documentation and operation, which I invite you to go check into our booth. And then we have this multi-stack option that came back from the previous presentation where we could have the IT or we have a stack that is more for real time that's optimized for the radio, another one open stack and so on. I'm going to now to my uh, last slide. So this is the data center manager. We can see a lot more. I will not talk about it. I will just let you experience it in our booth where we could do it with the virtual and augmented reality with the team. Going back to this one, I would just like to conclude with one word, why Nokia is here. For the longest time, Nokia had issues and we, had, we were a company that was in trouble in the early 2011, 2012. And we used to have what? Suppliers. And I don't know if you have ever been a supplier to a major company, but I don't think there is worse jobs than that. <laughs> because they is procurement driven, it's nickel and dime, and at the end of the day, it's a very unhealthy relationship. The first thing that goes out of the window when you are dealing with the supplier is innovation, because you're only talking about money. We have been to a point where we have driven some suppliers almost out of business, or some suppliers who told us, you know what, I don't want your business anymore. We learned from that, and we have moved from that relationship of supplier to, be, to having partners. Why do we need to have partners? Because we know we cannot do everything alone. And we cannot also just take the best products, put them together, and then sell it. Somebody else could do that for us. But what we can do is to bring our understanding, our comprehension of the telecom world and the telecom needs, and work with you and with the partners to not have a best of products, but best of suites. And this is why we embrace the openness, and we are very happy to be here, and I thank you for your time.